If you want a detailed explanation on the joining of these two part cup corsets, then please watch this video to the end. Alright, there's a twist to this video. In the part one, here I totally forgot to add the clips of the drafting of the back pattern. If you want to skip this part, please skip to exactly 2 minutes and 38 seconds. Meanwhile, my name is Mercy from the Carries brand and let's get right into this very short pre-tutorial. I start my basic bodice pattern. You can check out the video linked up here right now on how I created mine. Holding a piece of the side front, I'll take the measurement of the length of this piece and place the exact same measurement on my pattern paper. And then I'll slant it down to the bust line just like you see me doing so now the next thing i'll do is to take my horizontal measurement from the bust line and the waistline now my original bust measurement is 8.5 and i'll add one inch for sewing allowance please watch carefully what i'm doing here now you need to watch more carefully what i'll do at the waist the original waist measurement is 6.5 inches i'll add one inch for that and i'll also add another one inch for sewing allowance but now the twist is that i'll remove one inch for waist snatching and note that this is not compulsory please note that there is no zip allowance in this tutorial because we are using the roping method i'm explaining this carefully because i noticed my hand was covering what i i measured here now you mark your dart at your nipple point mine is four inch so i'll mark it at the waistline at the bust line and at the under bust line now at the waistline i'll come back to the waistline and i'll mark half an inch on both sides of this four inch point and i'll connect these lines to the bust line as you see me doing connect then what i'll do next is that i'll connect my side measurements all right next i created a wide keyhole this is just for example for my back yoke you can check out my video where i created 13 neck patterns you can use that now note that the labeled part you won't be using that part that's the part you'll be cutting out now is the other side towards the neck pattern that you would cut out now i'm going to leave this two piece pattern i'm going to leave this two pattern for the back because i'm just going to be using this two pattern i'm going to be leaving it out because i want to create a boning channel at that part that i joined now this is pretty much it this is pretty much it now right into the main video i used my leftover cord lace for this top and it required double lining for all the parts i iron interface to the lining and use my hemming gum to attach the first lining to the cord now what i will do is to join the side front the side front to the center front remember that we've labeled this earlier so you should understand what i'm saying looking at your pattern paper i will join the side front to the center front so now instead of three pieces as you see me doing right on the screen these are three pieces it will become one piece i will join it to become one piece of under fabric and then the next thing i'll join the cup to each other making sure i have the right side faces facing each other now you can still use your pattern paper notice that my pattern paper is on my own you can use your pattern paper and the two parts will become one cup for the left and one cup for the right now let's go to our machine and do this but before we do that now look at the lining the second lining now we're going to do the exact same thing that i told you to do for the main fabric you're going to do the exact same thing on the lining exact same thing that you do on the fabric you do it for the lining finally before i feature my machine here we'll cut out the breast pad for the cups using the cup patterns now before you make your own bigger please i'll beg you cut it exactly cut it exactly you will notice why i said this later on in the video now you'll be cutting two pieces each for each cup two pieces for each cup now you go ahead to the machine and join these cups that you've created join it normally and we'll come back here all right i went to the machine to join the cups first so i joined the cups and then the breast part first of all we'll focus on the cup now this is what the inside looks like before ironing it now go using my iron now iron it carefully now this is my makeshift breast ball if you want a diy tutorial on how to make the breast ball please leave a comment below all right now a sewing hack that i used here 
is that i'll use my interface to gum the joining part to make sure it stays in place now this is the first cup that i joined and i'll go ahead to do the second cup exactly the same i'll iron first use my interface and iron again Alright, this is the breast part that I've joined earlier. Now, I'll make sure that the wrong side of the joining is facing me and the right side sits carefully inside the cup. I'll arrange it till it sits carefully in the cup. Now, this is the excess at the top. Here's the reason why I said earlier that we should cut the breast part exactly as the pattern. This next step is very crucial and you must be careful. Now what you are doing is that you are going to trim the excess from the joining of the breast part. Trim to a fault actually. But you will be very careful not to trim the seam. You trim, keep trimming and trimming and trimming. Open up and you keep trimming. With my hemming gum in between the breast cup and the fabric, I will make sure that the breast cup sits in the cup properly. And I'll gum it together using my iron. Make sure that the cups gum together very easy, very well using my iron. Now I'll take the cups together and I'm going to trim the edge. I'll trim the edges. Now this is a form of seam allowance. This is what it should look like. You see, the cup has come together. Next, this is the center front and the two pieces of the side front that I join together to become one piece all I just need to do is to iron it properly so that my boning channels can sit now holding my bias I'm going to create my boning channel under the cup and at the center I'm just going to be creating three only three boning channels at the front here now what I'll do is that I would hold the center of the fabric and I'm going to iron it, iron it flat so I will get that center properly for my channel. I'll be using the plastic boning which is also known as the non sewable boning. They come in several sizes so you see this one here is less than half an inch which is about 0.44 inch. Now one thing to note is that you follow the curve of the boning the side that curves inward will face the body so that it's curving inward to hug the body don't place the curve to face outwards it should curve inwards so that it will hug the body properly now what you're going to do is that you are first going to sew the bias then you are going to attach the cup before inserting the boning you have to follow this process because you cannot sew on this boning and it will break or bend your needle so you need to be careful so you first sew your bias first attach your bias to the cloth attach the cup to the cloth before you insert your boning properly so here i already sewn and i've attached my bias to my fabric and i went ahead and attach the first cup this is what the first cup looks like on the inside and on the outside i attached with that little allowance now go ahead and attach the second one this is how i did it i would make sure that the second cup is in sync syncs with the under part and i'll make sure that it sits carefully before i attach it all right watch what i do here This is what it should look like and the pieces are coming together next is to fix your boning carefully the bias tip is half an inch while the boning is less than half an inch as i told you earlier now you need to put this into consideration because a tight boning channel makes your work only look unprofessional and it's even hard to pass the boning in between what you see me doing here is that i just measured half an inch from the top and i stitched it so that that is the point where the boning would stop all right i'll attach the boning right now 
without forgetting to burn the tip of the boning i'll attach the boning and this is what it looks like isn't it so beautiful with the boning i mean the structure that it gave it i'm actually fangirling over this book i mean it's too beautiful it's actually fine so neat and pretty oh my god now this is the inside of the work and we focus on the back afterwards this is the back i've cut out the back we'll make use of a double lining just like the front to strengthen the lace and for neatness now i'll join both sides of the back you know the back is in two pieces so i'll join the both sides to become one so instead of four pieces now we'll be having two pieces and i'll attach my boning just like i did for the front one at that joining and another one inch from the center so this is the one at the joining and this is the other one one inch from the center back next i'll create space for the ropes and i'll leave half an inch at the top of the rope and create a space of one inch one inch interval as you are seeing on the screen one inch interval to the end of the fabric i'll use my bias again or you can create your own rope if this feels too small for you i folded the bias and i marked this bias at 2.5 inch interval so one inch on the fabric and 2.5 inches on the bias so this is the half inch allowance at the top and i'll start from that point which i marked not from the top i'll start from that point which i marked and now with the rope at 2.5 inch i will fold it to create new loops at the one inch point so watch carefully what i'm doing once i get to a one inch point i'll create a loop there i'll create a loop at each one inch point like reach the under of the fabric all right watch me Alright, the loops must be facing the inside of the fabric and this is what they should look like. So you sew them facing the inside of the fabric, not the outside. I will do the same for the other side of the back and then I will come over and join the side of the fabric to each other. This is it. I join it by 2 inch instead of 1 inch. Now turning it over, I created a strap of 14 inches long with my bias tape of course and I joined one. To, to one side of the cup and the other side to the boning channel at the back that's one strap and i'll do the same for the other strap now i'll attach the lining i would sew on three sides of the lining so that is the top one side of the of the clothes and the underside leaving one part open so that is the side i will use to turn this fabric to the outside now this is the fabric after joining this is what it looked like and i'll turn it to the front with the opening at this point this is the part that was left open and i'll just fold it in and top stitch carefully if you're interested in seeing the drafting tutorial it's linked right up on the screen now please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't give this video a thumbs up share this video if you can and leave a comment Till next time, bye.